Well, we're getting a delayed start to the action of men's volleyball coverage between Mountain View and their arch rival, the Red Mountain Mountain Lions, but just a couple of minutes before we are underway before this rivalry matchup. How's it going, everybody? Tuning in on the Varsity Sports Show. I'm Kobe Bronstein alongside Sammy Califf. Sammy, before we get into a breakdown of both these teams, this is my first time working with you, and I'm delighted to be here with you in the broadcasting booth calling this game. Well, it took long enough for me to, for me and you to get paired. I mean, I'm excited to see what we can do tonight, especially with this star-studded game we have coming up. Absolutely. We waited a long time. And why? Well, we had a JV game that went all the way to a sudden death third set. The first two sets extremely close. And Mountain View, the home side in the end, able to get a victory in the third set. And it all sets the stage for the main event in terms of the Varsity Boys game between the Mountain View Toros taking on the Red Mountain Mountain Lions. Mountain View Toros coached by Kevin Powell. Sammy caught up with both coaches before the game. Before we get into those interviews, Coach Powell's squad, the Toros, 10-12 and 2, their overall record on the season. Both Mountain View and Red Mountain compete in the 6A East Valley Division. The Toros, 4-2 and two within that division, good for second place. 2-1 and one at home. They've played 24 total matches, and believe it or not, just three of them at home. Quickly, we'll take a look at Jeremy Hutter's side for the Red Mountain Mountain Lions, 11-9 overall record, 2-4 in the 6A East Valley Division. That's good for fourth place, 2-5 and five on the road, and they're looking to get their third victory at a road site this season. Again, Sammy caught up with both head coaches first. We're going to go into the Mountain View interview, followed by the Red Mountain interview with Coach Jeremy Hutter. Here's Sammy that caught up with both coaches. I'm Sammy Caleb of the Varsity Sports Show here with Mountain View head coach Kevin Powell. Coach, obviously a very big game for you guys tonight. Your last section win came against Skyline just a few weeks ago. What is something you guys learned from that game that you're going to use here tonight? Uh, well, we still got a lot of players out to sickness, so it was a good experience for some of those players stepping up and learning how to win. So hopefully it carries out, carries on to tonight. Yeah, Coach, obviously you guys are in a very prominent position right now when it comes to the team, and obviously your roster is very stacked. What are you expecting from them here tonight? Uh, we're, we're just going to play hard and concentrate on our side of the net and let the score take care of itself. Coach, thank you for your time. I'm Sammy Caleb with the Varsity Sports Show here with Mount Red Mountain head coach Jeremy Hutter. Jeremy, this is your second meeting with Mountain View this season. Earlier this season, you guys lost to them. What is something you guys learned from last game that you're going to use here tonight? I think based on the last game that we played them, you know, we really tried to work on our defense, try to get a little bit quicker, get a little bit crafty with how they place the ball and everything. So that was kind of something we really focused on. The Tompkinsons, Garrett and Brexton, have been dominating your team all season. They lead in stats in every category. What are you expecting here tonight from them? Uh, expecting great things. You know, we had a really good practice yesterday. They're really great on the core. They're com really communicative um, and really just come through for us in tight situations. Coach, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks, Sammy, and great job, as always, on both interviews. About to get underway, this rivalry matchup between the Toros and the Mountain Lions. Sammy, your quick thoughts on this matchup. Both these teams have played once before this at the home of Red Mountain, and it was Mountain View that got the victory, but Red Mountain has the better matchup, or rather a better overall record coming into today's game. So in terms of Mountain View Toros, they can tie up this season record with their arch rival. Well, I did catch up with Coach Jeremy Hutter just a few moments ago, and he told me that what they've learned from last loss is that they got to get their defense up, they got to get the strikes up, and they look to make an example of that here tonight. So Red Mountain, in terms of their stretch over the last couple games, they're on a one-game losing streak. Before that, they won against Buckeye 2 to nothing, or rather 2-zip, and Red Mountain, a 6A team facing Buckeye, a Buckeye, a 5A team. That was in a tournament game at a neutral site on April 13th. And again, they got a victory over Buckeye there. The last time out, didn't exactly get in the victory column. A 2-1 close loss at Estrella Foothills. And Estrella Foothills was the tournament host. So that game not technically at a neutral site for Red Mountain, who's 3-1 at those neutral site games. And in terms of their matchup with Estrella Foothills, they lost 2-1, 25-21, able to get a first set win. 
And then the last two sets didn't go their way against a good year Arizona Bay school. They lost 25 to 18 in the second set and a very close, sharp, razor sharp loss, 17 to 15 in the, th the third set. So that's for head coach Jeremy Hutter and his squad. Taking a look at Mountain View, talked about their overall record. They're under 500, and they are on a three-game losing streak. This time last week, they played against Skyline at home. Skyline, a team that's 0-13. Mountain View able to make quick work of them. But since Sammy, they played three straight games, losing every one of them, all in tournaments. So they lost against American Leadership Academy, Gilbert North. That's a plethora of words right there. They lost 2 nothing on April 12th. They also took on Arizona College Prep based out of Chandler, Arizona, a 2-1 to one set loss there, and then followed up by a loss against Desert Ridge, also in a tournament game the next day. So, Sammy, this is obviously a tough stretch for Mountain View as they close in on some of the final games of their season. Mountain View's last win came against Skyline, and that was a section game just a couple of weeks ago, and this is a section game for those who are just now tuning in. It is a very important game for both teams here today. But let's look at some of the stats here for Ma Mountain View. I mean, Matex Williams leads in kills per set with 3.3. Um, hitting, He also leads in hitting percentage with 0 0.291. And serving aces with 17 and kills at 108. Yeah, there's great players on both sides. And all that awaits now before the very first point, the national anthem. So we'll head to a very quick break. And a rivalry matchup you don't want to miss after the break. When you think of family restaurants and sports bars, think Bonfire. Bonfire is part of the Tempe landscape, supporting local schools. Join the Bonfire Booster Club Challenge. Mention Corona Del Sol, Desert Vista, Marcos Denisa, Mountain Point, or Valley Christian, and that school's sports program will earn loyalty points. The winner after football season will earn a fundraiser at Bonfire. Come for the food and fun. Support the community. Bonfire. Open every day east of I-10 on Warner. Show your game ticket all day Friday and Saturday and get 15% off. 480-306-6801. Hey folks, J.R. Lambright here, Special Field Correspondent for the Varsity Sports Show. Join me every Saturday from 8 to 10 a.m. Pacific for J.R.'s Texas Tales, where I share stories of Texans who triumphed over adversity and gave back to their local communities. Tune in for a bit of gritty edification on KDUS AM 1060, Arizona. Welcome back, everybody, to the Varsity Sports Show. Kobe Bronstein alongside Sammy Califf giving you the coverage for Mountain View Toros volleyball action against their arch rival just 10 minutes down the road in the Red Mountain Mountain Lions. About to get underway here, playing the first point of the match. Both teams not exactly coming on the stretch that they would have liked coming into today's game. I highlighted that a little bit earlier. Sammy had to cut you off a little bit early because we went to the National Anthem. But go back to what you were saying before about some of the players that some of the viewers need to tune in to uh, in terms of that are going to really set the tone for both squads. For the break, I was reading off some stats for Mountain View's team as Matex Williams leads in kills per set this season with 3.3. He also leads in hitting percentage with 0 0.291. Serving aces this season with 17 and kills with 108. Trent Whalen leads in total blocks with 20 aces per set with 0 0.5 and assists with 233. Brody Bingham leads in digs per set with 3.1 and digs of the season with 124. And finally, Madden Hall leads in receptions with 194. He is an outstanding server. I was on the call this time last week when Mountain View got their last victory on their season, their 10th win of the season. They took on Skyline and Madden Hall in the second set had five straight aces. So look out for him on the right side, serving the ball. He's going to be one of the players to watch for on this Mountain View lineup. And as Sammy mentioned, going through some of the players to watch for on both sides in this rivalry matchup. Varsity Sports Show was also broadcasting a basketball game here at Mountain View between both so squads. And that game couldn't have been any closer. And this game, we expect nothing but the same from Red Mountain against their rival in the Mountain View Toros. Like I mentioned before, I had a chat with head coach of Red Mountain, Jeremy Hutter, and he told me that the Tompkinson brothers, Garrett and Brexton, he expects very big things from them here tonight. They lead in stats 
in most categories for Red Mountain this season. And now we're going to see an example of that here. Should be a very great game, Kobe. Red Mountain with possession after the serve. An attempt to get it over towards the back line, sailing wide. And early here, it's going to be a 1-0 lead. There's 2-0 on the board here. I saw one of the referees take out a red card, so I'm not sure if there was a point awarded to Mountain View before this match even started. but Or rather, Red Mountain, excuse me. So Toros now get on the board after the serve is missed in the net. So after just two points of play, Sammy, it's a 2-1 to one score. So the two points being played isn't reflected necessarily on the scoreboard. They might throw someone out like they did with Arujo for Barcelona earlier today. Oh boy, what a matchup that was. Certainly going to be the same now here. We have this. Back up in the air and it's set down. It's touched in the back line by Brody Bingham. Not able to get a hand on it. So Red Mountain able to up their lead to two early on, three to one. Bingham leads and digs this season with 124. That was, I believe, 125. Jack Thornton on serve. They get it towards the outside, and Bigler taps it over. No one home. That's the kind of toss-up you would see playing beach volleyball. Yes, he would. Just a two-handed pass over the net. No kill needed from Bigler in Mountain View. His squad down 3-2 to two back to serve, but short and in the net. So it's going to give Red Mountain another opportunity to get back on serve, and they're able to double up their counterpart in the Toros today. No, oh, we're witnessing a very great matchup so far. It is now 4-2 Red Mountain. And like you said before, both teams have incredibly close stats. And now we're going to see an example of that right now. I think the same player touched it twice. They didn't call it. Back towards the outside. Oh. A great block on the outside. That time, Brexton Tompkinson, one of the players, Sammy, that you pointed out before the game. That is a tone setter for this squad. Getting it done early. Brexton leads and kills per set for Red Mountain with 3.8. He also leads and kills this season with 109 and receptions with 128. So both Tompkinson brothers, not twins. Brexton, the younger of Garrett Tompkinson, his brother. This ball sent towards the middle. Big kill. That wasn't blocked up front. And another Red Mountain point. Good job on the attempt from Luca Erickson up front. And a side out here for Red Mountain. 5-3 to three lead for the Mountain Lions against the Toros early. Again, one matchup played between both squads early on in this season. Also in Mesa, Arizona, but at the home of the Mountain Lions. And it was a 3-1 to one victory for the roadside Mountain View Toros. It's a crosstown matchup here, Kobe. Obviously, a lot of people in attendance here wanting to see this one. Dallin Pennington on serve. A good kill attempt, but it just misses wide to the right. That time from Porter Wilhelm up front on the near side. Trying to send that down with a thunderous attempt. A lot of mustard behind that. But his team falls behind by three. Red Mountain on serve once again. A set up towards the middle. Off the net. Can Red Mountain keep it going? They can. What a diving effort by the libero. Back up front to Wilhelm who sends it down towards the back line. Wilhelm missing just a point earlier towards the outside. On the right, able to convert that time. Almost a Superman effort from Braxton Horta, but unfortunately they just came up short as it is now 6-4 to four Red Mountain here in the first set. Luke Jones on the serve, set towards the outside, able to send it down across court kill. That was barely in. Again, Braxton Tompkinson, he can elevate. And he was able to send down a point for his squad. As soon as you see Brexton go up in the air, it is all over for your defense. Back to serve now off the top of the net and on his team's side of the court. So the serve now back to Madden Hall and the Toros. Hall in the last home matchup, five straight aces in the second set. There's that great serve I was talking about early on. They get it towards the outside and able to send it down. That one... Caught the Toros in no man's land in that middle third of their lineup. That time, the recipient of the kill, Dallin Pennington. Red Mountain has done a very excellent job at catching Mountain View off guard, and that's what's gotten them most of their points tonight. Erickson back, back to serve. Sends it towards the back line. Jones able to retreat it on the back set. Good dig from Tompkinson. 
And could have been a block either way, maybe off the top of the net, and the Toros get the point. Bingham takes a seat. Now coming back into the game for Mountain View. is We don't have a number 18, believe it or not, on their lineup. But he just came into the game and sending it outside of the lines. Porter Wilhelm, and he's going to take a quick seat after Bingham sat down for just a point. Also, Ty Denham into the game for the first time. He had some great kills on the outside as a hitter in the last home matchup where the Varsity Sports Show was able to broadcast it. Tate Bigler on the second effort. Big man strike that time. And that's exactly what Mountain View needs. If you want to win this game, you got to capitalize with those Superman spikes. Seen it a couple times early on. Going back to serve this time now for Mountain View, number nine, Maddox Williams. Maddox electing to go on the left side with that left-handed serve. Down the line towards the inside. That one sailed well out of bounds. It almost left. took that guy off guard. <laughs> it did. There's a camera on the far side, too. That's got to be careful on some of these booming attempts from the hitters up front for Red Mountain. 10-7 lead for the roadside. Williams to serve again. Able to get an ace. The first one of the match. And Williams, the recipient. Again from the left side. Down the line. Towards the middle. And nothing Mountain View can do about it. That time on the kill. Garrett Tompkinson already talked about his brother Brexton, the younger of the two both times, but the junior, Garrett Tompkinson, able to get Red Mountain on the board in an 11-9 lead. The current score is 9-10, a very close game here. When, I mean, it is expected when you have two mountains going head-to-head, -head, it's almost like an earthquake. A good use of words there, Sammy, to describe this matchup. Obviously, again, both rivals... There's a name to this rivalry, too, that I don't have for you right now. Definitely want to get that information after one of these sets. Good touch attempt. Can Mountain View keep it going? They can. What an effort from Williams. Now on the inside, Williams again on the dig. Bingham to Jones. And the same player hit it twice. What an effort on the outside for Maddox Williams. Great effort there from the Toros. And you almost thought that they would get the point there, but none, nonetheless, it's a great effort. Williams already with a kill on the inside, an ace to his name, too. Back on the outside, a back set. Jones, a thunderous strike. But Mountain View, able to keep it alive, almost a miscommunication. Williams. Back to Red Mountain on the outside. Tompkinson, no block, ends up in the net. And it's all knotted up at 11. Mountain View now on serve. Brody Bingham can try to put his squad... In the lead for the first time today. Getting it towards the outside and it's sent down. Nasty spike there to give the Red Mountain the lead. I mean, this is what I've been saying. I mean, this is what they've been doing a great job with all night. I mean, just capitalizing with those spikes and doing more later on. Bigler near it, but unable to anticipate it in time. So Mountain View... Still falls behind by a point. Here's Wilhelm. Able to get another point for Mountain View and put themselves back on serve. Both squads after the initial set wasting no time in order to apply the pressure to the opposite side. Jones on serve. Towards the outside, almost hitting the ceiling. Trying to get it back towards the front line. They do. Nice job from Red Mountain. Jones to Wilhelm. Bizarre effort. Bingham, nice job from behind there. And almost good, right towards us. Almost near the broadcasting booth. And Hall able to give his team a point in the Toros, the first lead in the first set today. Seems some great defense from both sides after the pace really starts to pick up on some of the kill attempts. Cross court kill gets Jones off balance. A nice effort that time from Dallin Pennington. 
Said his name a couple of times already. Boy, it's a great name, too. I mean, it's worth repeating a lot. Brexton Tompkinson on serve. Gets it towards the middle. Bingham. All the way up in the air. Jones to Denham. Red Mountain there. Tompkins. Jones a back set. Oh, and what an effort from Madden Hall. How do you do? Off the palm to the other side, cross court. No one home for Red Mountain. Oh, what a great way to make an impact and make a name for yourself in this game as Madden Hall goes back to serve now for the first time. Good serve there. An overpass towards the other side. Wilhelm back in the air, in the air to Denham. Red Mountain now on offense. And Tompkinson does that. You know, Kobe, there has never been a large lead here. It has either been down by one or two or tied. I mean, we're witnessing an incredibly close game here tonight. No one really maintaining control of the game right now. Again, Sammy, as you perfectly pointed out, it's been either a one or two point game on either side in the first 28 points. Now on the inside, Bigler able to get it down. Two players not communicating enough for Red Mountain. Porter Wilhelm, three-sport athlete for Mountain View. Backs to serve for the first time. He's going to have another go. Didn't like his toss. And to Noah Valley, cross the line. He's going to come out now for Libero and Brody Bingham. So, Sammy, just when you think that someone's able to get momentum, an error like that gives it back to the other team. Like I mentioned before, there has never been a commanding lead so far in the game. I mean, these two teams have come incredibly close to each other, and it's just, we're, I mean, like I said before, I mean, it's going to be a great game. 30 points in, and it's 15 to 15. There's Bigler. Nice dig by the libero that time, and Orta ending the point. Red Mountain on the inside. Jace Villapondo, first time we said his name. Remember, first of 25 wins the set, and, oh, it could really go either way here. Red Mountain in the lone matchup at home, a losing effort, just winning one out of four sets to their opposition in the Toros today. Up front off the top of the net, Red Mountain keeping it going. Tompkinson, that would have gone long, but Madden Hall keeps it alive. Denham off the ceiling to Tompkinson again. Brody Bingham a dig towards the middle line. Now on the outside, inside rather, to Bigler. Back to Tompkinson. Misses wide to the right. Hamburger, cheeseburger, Big Mac, Whopper. That's the formula they've been following all night long as they keep getting these points in. I love this energy, Sammy. And that's exactly the energy that both teams are pouring out right now. Deadlocked at even has the score been throughout in this set. Lefty server and Williams back to serve. Orta towards the outside via Pondo with the left hand, touches the net. Seventeen to sixteen. Now. Yeah, seventeen to sixteen now. Remember, like I mentioned before, first of twenty-five wins a set. I mean, we are just deadlocked here. I mean, it is a stalemate, as there has never been one large lead here. As Mountain View gets another point, they're making it 18 to 16. Yeah, the point ended a little bit early on the inside. It was Caleb Haskett who touched the net. The first two-point lead for the Toros here in the first set. Williams back to serve. Back pass to Tompkinson who misses outside. This is the largest lead of the night so far, 19 to 16, as both teams take a timeout. Yeah, what a perfect opportunity for a timeout for Coach Hutter and Red Mountain. And with that, we're going to take a quick break on the Varsity Sports Show. Okay. All right, so Miami is at Kansas City. They'll be facing the sixth seeded North Valley Christian Academy.
Deep. He's looking for Jack Freeberg and he has him open for the touchdown. Just like that, a 44 yard touchdown to Jack. This is Bobby Murphy here with Varsity Sports Show at Arizona College Prep. After I'm here with Coach Jason Jewell after an extremely gritty 14. In years. Shay, what did you see from the Sabercats tonight? Largest lead of the night for the Mountain View Toros. Only just a three-point lead, 19-16. to 16. This game has gone back and forth on both sides throughout. Maddox Williams back on serve for the third straight point. Sends it over towards the middle, now on the inside. Back tap, no one home for Red Mountain. Looked like a design effort to get it back to Jack Thornton, but he wasn't there. Mountain View is on a three-game losing streak, but it real it could really change the tide for them here tonight if they keep playing the way they're playing, as oh. that ball just goes sailing over the net. Overpass and ending it quickly is Mountain View. Now up to a five-point lead and as commanding of a lead as ever early on here in the first set. Obviously the largest lead of the night here, 21-16. to 16. It looks like Mountain View has finally found their stride here. 21-16 lead for the home side, Toros. Tompkinson puts it up in the air off the ceiling. Nobody home up front. When it goes off of this ceiling, you don't know what can happen. The point continues, but Red Mountain not able to keep it going. 22-16 now for the Toros. They have a huge opportunity to close out this set. First of 25 points takes it. Williams started serving at 16-16. Now a six-point lead for his team. Good block up front by Bigler. Gives his team another point, and they're up by seven. Brody Bingman has been absolutely dominant all season, and tonight is no different. Now the seventh straight point. Williams back to serve on the left side. Hasn't necessarily served with a lot of pace, but he's keeping the mountain lines on their toes. Orta, Libero puts up in the air, back to Viapondo. And too strong for Madden Hall in that back line for Mountain View. So Red Mountain finally able to get a point back, clawing into this six-point deficit. You know what they say, when you mess with the bull, you get the horns, and that's exactly what the Toros are doing right here. As another opportunity to close out the set, only need two more points here, and they almost got the first one. Mountain View towards the back line, sends it over to Red Mountain. And nobody home on the outside that time. Not necessarily a thunderous kill from Mountain View, but able to get the job done. Oh, those corner shots are always tough. I mean, you never know whether they're going to be in or out, and it's always tough for the receiving team, knowing that it was barely in. 24-17, to 17, Tate Bigler in a big spot trying to put his team over the top here in the first set. Serves it into the net. Giving Red Mountain a sign of life. Down by six. Mountain View will have a huge advantage if they're able to score just one more point. As they will be up one nothing in this game. Orta to serve. Close but no cigar for Red Mountain. So Mountain View. Fell behind early but able to take the first set. 25-18. to 18. An entertaining first set of action here, Sammy, between two sides that are rivals just 10 minutes down the road from each other. You know, it was really, I mean, it was a stalemate for most of the first set. I mean, but Mountain View was able to really find their stride here. And it was just, I mean, an absolutely incredible run from Mountain View just in the final minutes of the set. Don't go anywhere, folks. Folks, a 25 to 18 first set win for the home side Mountain View Toros. We'll be back with second half, or rather second set action after a quick break on the Varsity Sports Show. 
Good evening or good afternoon to everyone watching this rendition of the Varsity Sports Show. My name is Nash Dare and I'm a student at Arizona State University studying sports journalism at the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication. This week I was given the opportunity of getting some really good videos of the amenities and great opportunities provided from this prestigious school. So let's go into the building and go check it out. First, let's check out the classrooms here. The classrooms and lectures halls have state-of-the-art features that help students succeed. The classrooms are all suited with MacBooks and projectors, while the lecture halls have seats with chargers to connect to them, along with television monitors and more. When you first enter the second floor, you walk into the Walter Cronkite Community Forum, which is a spot for students and to talk with each other and relax while in between or before classes. There are four huge televisions that display the news from all over, and it's a perfect spot to relax before class or get some last-minute studying in before your big exam. Next are the media bays. The media bays are a more secluded area that also have MacBooks as well as attached microphones where students can edit video and sound as on the attached Adobe features. Around the hallways are also old artifacts and memorabilia that have shown the evolution of media throughout the years. There are artifacts in almost every hall and there is a big section dedicated to the famous Walter Cronkite that shows some of his own pipes along with stories he wrote and the stories that were written about him. Finally, we're saving for the best for last, and that is going to check out my favorite part of the building, which is the top floor, and that is the state-of-the-art newsrooms. These newsrooms have the same features and media features as a well-public known station. It has the newest cameras, lights, and a brand new desk for the anchors. This is a feature that only few journalism schools have. Schools will have newsrooms like this, but no school can compete with the quality of the newsrooms like Arizona State University. This is one of the amazing parts of not only the Cronkite School, but the entirety of Arizona State. I highly recommend coming to the downtown Phoenix campus and taking a look into this awesome school. The schools provide free transportation that goes all throughout three campuses, including the Tempe campus, the West campus, and finally the Polytechnic campus. So if you ever think about studying journalism of any kind, please look into the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication. With that being said, I'm Nash Dara, and this is the Varsity Sports Show. A first set that was close for most of this set, but it turned into a victory for the Mountain View Toros, 25 to 17. Kobe Bronstein and Sammy Califf with you, giving you the coverage of today's Mountain View Boys Volleyball game on the Varsity Sports Show. Sammy, we've mentioned throughout the broadcast, and why not mention it again, that both these teams just separated by a couple of miles, and Mountain View coming into today on a three-game losing streak, this time last week able to get a section win against Skyline, a team that was previously winless, 3 nothing, and they get back ahead here, one to nothing. but coming into today with a three-game losing streak. You know, both these teams are called the Mountains. I mean, it's in their name, but we're just really trying to figure out here which mountain is taller. Red Mountain, a little bit of a taller mountain to scale here down by a set. Ball now back with Mountain View. Towards the inside, Bigler, a good block up front. Trying to get it to Tompkins on the outside, a push over the net. Bigler not able to keep the point going. Great set there from Red Mountain. And as they look to take an early lead in the second set, as Mountain View is already up one to nothing in this game. So Red Mountain on serve. Caleb Haskett sending it over. Williams up in the air. And Mountain View able to get the point off of a deflection in the back line for Red Mountain. Don't have a name on number 18. We saw him in the JV game, Sammy, but wasn't listed on Max Preps. But he's had a couple of good plays. And the next pause in the action, I will get that name for number 18 for Mountain View. 1-1 one, one second set. Bigler on serve. Cross court over the net and overpass. Back with Red Mountain. Can't keep it going. Orta diving out in front onto his stomach. With how close we are, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw another deadlock set. I mean, both teams really, they just kept it close in the last one, so I wouldn't be surprised if we saw another one here. As that play was just an example, as it is now 2-2. Two two. Yeah, good eye from Tompkins, and he elected to put his hands out, but then retreated after he realized it was going to go off the back line. Tompkins in to serve, back up front. Towards the outside of Jones. Cross court, good block up front. Keep it going, Tompkinson. Now a good dig by Williams on the outside. Jones sends it over to no man's land. No one in that middle row. Red Mountain needed to retreat after a couple of booms from Jones on the outside. 
Braxton Horta, I mean, he attempted to make a diving save, and that unfortunately wasn't enough as he came close, but no cigar there as Mountain View looked to extend their lead. Bingham on serve. Libero to Libero on the receiving end. Good block by Hall. Ball still with Red Mountain. Good left-handed kill attempt. So the point's going to end quickly. A net touch by Mountain View up front. Entertaining point, Sammy, for as long as it lasted. Yeah, it would have worked in Mountain View's favor if he didn't touch the net there. But now Red Mountain have another shot to retake the lead. Or to back to serve. Up front to Williams. Wilhelm able to get it past the man up front for Red Mountain, Luca Erickson, who blocked it, but not able to keep it going for his team. This is exactly what Mountain View needs. Spikes like that. I mean, just think of it as Jaws taking big bites out of the other team. Love these puns you're bringing into the broadcast, making it a lot more exciting, Sammy, as always. And a net touch up front by... Madden Hall on the kill attempt from Rocco Damasari. And actually a net touch by Damasari instead of Hall. So back to serve Jones again for Mountain View. Not a good reception, but... And you see why it hit the ceiling towards that back line and nobody able to pick up the slack. The ceiling has been... I mean, the ceiling can be a disadvantage for both teams here, as you just saw, as it Ru ruin Red Mountain's momentum. The Toros have doubled up Red Mountain here. Another not great reception by Red Mountain and the kill attempt from Erickson in the middle of that back row sails wide mm. to the right. Red Mountain just said the ceiling can't hold us. That's a song by Macklemore. Another reference. I'm loving it, Sammy. Lance Jones to serve again. A much better reception that time and it's going to be a point for Red Mountain Ty Denham up front on the outside for Mountain View not able to get it back over for his team oh we're seven to four now Toros and as expected another close set didn't see a lead like this early on through 11 points in the first set but the Toros find themselves on top by three Wilhelm up front. Good block that time by Orta. Dig in the back half by Jones. Now on the near side, Denham sends it over. Back towards the middle for Red Mountain. Now on the outside, but missing too far outside. Trying to jam it in that left corner. Already the largest lead of the second set here. Toro's up by four points. Eight to four, Mountain Toro also, or Mountain View rather. Also up by a set, 25-17. to 17. Madden Hall, a little bit too strong in the serve. Gives his opposition another opportunity in this three-point deficit. No, Red Mountain looks to make a little bit of a comeback here as they're only down three points now. Back on the outside, Bigler able to get a point for his team via Pondo. Not able to send it over on the block up front. Yeah, great play by Bigler there. I mean, he's been knocking those shots in all night. I mean, those blocks have really helped Mountain View as it is now 9-5. to five. Junior Easton Stayskull haven't called his name a lot, but back to serve. A good dig attempt. Can they keep it going? They can. What a great effort on the outside by Bigler. Viapondo up front ends it. Almost a phenomenal... Oh, it, not that it already was phenomenal, but Mountain View almost... Just close, but no cigar there. Yeah, said that a couple of times, not just in terms of the closeness of every point, but close, but no cigar is a line we may use throughout this broadcast. Oh, even I stumbled over my words there. That's how amazing that was. Denim on the outside, able to get a point. Tompkinson up front, the younger Garrett Tompkinson. Not able to keep it going for his squad. Oh, great spike there by Ty Denham. I mean, at 10 to 6, I mean, still they're the largest lead of the set, and it's just by four points. Nobody has led by five points just yet. Big crossover from basketball to volleyball here. Denham, another one of those basketball players for the Toros. Back towards the middle, trying to get it to the inside via Pondo. Off the top of the net. 
Bingham and Libero towards the outside to Jones. A great block up front. Nice job from Garrett Tompkinson, the older brother of Brexton. His team just down by three points. Certainly the momentum is on the side of Mountain View, but at any point it could switch to the team just a couple miles away in Red Mountain. Both teams have very close records here. I mean, Red Mountain enters this game 11 to nine and Mountain View enters this game 10 to 12 to two. So it's no wonder we're seeing the balance shift back and forth a couple times here. Another great block by Garrett Tompkinson flexing his muscles after that one. 10 to eight for his squad. Caleb Haskett to serve for the second point in a row. Good cross court serve and nothing Mountain View can do about it. Oh, and you mentioned this earlier, Kobe. I mean, the lead could be retaken at any point. There's no guarantee that anyone holds a large lead in this game. That was a bullet and the first recorded ace for Red Mountain. Their team down by just a point. Another good serve, but Hall able to keep it going. But the kill attempt sails too far. And look at that, Sammy, a 10-10 game, talking about the momentum, and it's clearly starting to shift to the other side. Oh, Red Mountain were able to get those three points back in under two minutes. An incredible run so far. Let's see if they can keep the momentum going here. Even score here for Red Mountain. That one sails way too far. The prior two from Haskett able to control much better than that one, and Mountain View able to go back up by a point now. Oh, I'm intrigued to see what happens next here. Bigler down the middle too far. So both teams trading with some unforced errors here on the last pair of points. Now it's the younger Tompkinson back to serve in Brexton. Leading this team in kills. That time another miss serve. Oh, we have seen three consecutive miss serves now. I mean, wonder if the streak will end here as the Toros retake the lead. Try to tuck that just within the back left corner. He wanted to call in Tompkinson for Red Mountain, but to no avail. 12-11 for the Toros here in the second set. They won the first set 25-17. to That point ended quickly after a good kill attempt from Garrett. Garrett Tompkinson. He has really been this X factor. We've called out his brother Brexton on a lot of good blocks and serves, but in the kill category, he has been as good as anyone on this floor. Oh, Garrett Thompson leads in hitting percentage for Red Mountain this season with 0.258, and he also leads in total blocks this season with 29, but he's exceeded that number here tonight as Mountain View retakes the lead. Good back and forth point there as Sammy was filling in with some analysis. Back to 13 to 12 for the Toros. Lance Jones to serve. Down the line on the left side, a back set. Now towards the front, a good dig from that back line for the Toros. Wilhelm sending it over. Now back to Orta, almost misplays it. Good job by the older Tompkinson Garrett. On the outside to Hall but it's too far. Oh, that went to the Red Mountain bench that time. All getting a couple words of advice from his head coach, Kevin Powell. Both sides have really looked good early on outside of a couple serving errors, Sammy, that we saw in a stretch of a couple points in a row. Oh, the dominoes continue to fall here as we are all tied up at 13 points apiece. Let's see if one team can make it 14. Up in the air to Garrett Tompkinson. What a kill. Tucking that in beautifully in that back left corner. Oh, this is Red Mountain's first lead in quite a while as we are still pretty close here in the second set as Mountain View leads this game 1-0. Down by as much as 8-4. It's now 14-13 for Red Mountain. Back up in the middle. Orta to Tompkinson. And what can you do if you're Mountain View? He is killing it right now. That ball ricocheted off the bleachers and 
all, the, all the momentum is in Red Mountain's favor right now. So a timeout for Coach Powell and Mountain View. Wanted to talk things over after the change in momentum here for Red Mountain. Their fans coming out in full force, including some students on their feet. Yeah, I had a chance to catch up with Coach Powell earlier, and he told me that he expects big things from his roster here tonight. And even though they are down by two, they have not disappointed tonight. Absolutely. Sammy caught up with both both head coaches, Kevin Powell for the Toros and Jeremy Hutter for the Red Mountain Mountain Lions. Hutter squad 11-9 coming into today. A one-game losing streak after losing on April 13th at Estrella Foothills, the school at a Goodyear, Arizona. It was a tournament game, but not a neutral site tournament game. It was a tournament that Estrella Foothills was hosting themselves. So that's just considered a traditional road game for Red Mountain. That record just two and five on the season, looking to make that three of, and five as opposed to two and six. Oh, and you said it there. And like I mentioned before, the momentum is shifting back into Red Mountain's favor fairly quickly. Let's see if they can keep this up here as the Toros look to rework their strategy here as they just had a timeout meeting with Coach Powell. And it looks like behind the play, they're switching out a couple of the volleyballs. Now, maybe Dallin Pennington back to serve for Red Mountain. Didn't like the ball that he was using before for whatever reason. His squad up by two again, down by as much as eight to four. And it has been a turnaround for this Mountain Lions squad looking to climb a bigger mountain here. No pun intended. Down by a set as well. Now on the outside to Madden Hall. Off the top of the net. And that's a point for Red Mountain. Not what you want coming out of the timeout for Coach Powell. Oh, they're up by three points now. It's going to be very interesting to see who wins this set here. As the third set is undoubtedly the deciding factor of the game. So let's see what Mountain View can do here. Jones up in the air near side to Denham. Gets it back towards the back line. Now on the near side, Bigler able to keep it up. Bingham gets it over. Great job by Mountain View defensively as they get a dig from Jones. Now on the outside, Tompkinson puts it back in the air. Now to Viapondo. Great block by Porter Wilhelm. Barely able to sneak in on the left side. Oh, Wilhelm has been on fire tonight. He has had so many blocks and a lot of great serves too, might I add. I mean, he has been the driving force for Mountain View this tonight. Yeah, three-sport athlete, as I mentioned earlier, after another highlight play from the Mountain View Toro. But that time, Madden Hall too strong on the serve. And you've got to limit the errors. They're down by three points, and you're heading towards really the home stretch of the last six, seven points in order to get your team a second-set victory. Red Mountain to serve. Back towards Jones in the middle to Bigler on the inside. Tompkins ain't been able to keep it up. They get it back to him. Wilhelm on the block. The point still keeps going. Viapondo gets it in between both Bigler and Wilhelm. That's another point for the Mountain Lions. 17-15. Not a large lead here for the Red Mountains as it has been close all game. And it really only started to shift in Mountain View's favor towards the end of the first set. But now we're seeing a much closer set here. So the point just went to Mountain View after Viapondo sent his kill attempt into the net. And now on serve for the Toros, Easton Stayskull. Eighteen to fifteen for the Toros. Back on the outside to Tompkinson. What can you do, Sammy? I mean, this guy has tremendous power elevating for the kill on another attempt. Oh, and like I mentioned before, Garrett Tompkinson, he leads in hitting percentage this year, and he also leads in total blocks. As far as his brother goes, his brother leads in kills per set with 3.8 and kills this season with 109, but those numbers have gone way up tonight. That serve, not exactly the strongest, but it fell just below the feet of Hall, and it gives the Red Mountain Mountain Lions their second ace of the set. Second ace of the game. Coach Powell wants to talk things over again. Not traditional to see two timeouts here in one set, but 
that's what we have with a 20 to 15 score for the visiting side, Red Mountain Mountain Lions. We're going to head to a quick break, and we'll be back with more second set action after this. Make every day game day and never miss a moment from your favorite team with the AZ Preps 365 Live High School Sports app. The official app for all Arizona high school sports teams gives fans instant access to up-to-the-minute scores, news, highlights, and much more. Customize the app to fit your needs. Whether you're a student, coach, parent, or player, download it now for free. Available in both the Google Play Store and Apple App Store. Back to serve for Red Mountain, Luca Erickson out of the timeout for Coach Powell. His second of the second set. Red Mountain, a five-point advantage down by a set. Overpass towards the other side. And that time, it's Garrett Tompkinson again. All he needed was just a little push. Oh, Red Mountain's only four points away from winning the second set. And like you said before, we're entering the home stretch here when it comes to this game. As a third set will be the deciding factor. Up front to Jones, now to Bigler. What a block by Villapondo. An absolutely thunderous spike there from Villapondo. As you just saw, it ricocheted off the face of Tate Bigler. And even he can't believe it. As Red Mountain's only three points away now from winning the second set. Villapondo's teammates loving it after that huge block. Jones to the outside, and Denham, a good spot on that kill right down the line. Oh, Mountain View is looking to make a quick comeback here. Let's see if that pep talk from Coach Powell can help them. So Denham comes out after a big play for his team in order to just be down by six. Maddox Williams back to serve. Seen him a lot in this position, but this time coming a little bit more desperately than the times before that. That ball may have hit the ground, actually, but either way, an overpass. Now to Bigler. The Apondo gets it back over. Mountain View with it again. Bigler sends it off the hands into the back line of Red Mountain. Here's Tompkinson. A cross-court kill. Oh, Tompkinson has been absolutely dominant in the paint here tonight, especially when he is set up for that spike. It's really been... Tompkinson and Tom Tompkinson game here early on, especially in this second set to where Red Mountain just two points away from leveling this match at one set apiece. Maddox Hall back up in the air, a back set to Jones, who touches it over, and that's all he needs for his team to get now to 17 points in the second set. Oh, great play there by Jones as they are just down 23 to 17 now let's see if Mountain View can make a quick comeback here and that's not going to work for them maybe a little bit of nerves that time from Bigler and that gives the other side a set point at 24 to 17 Mountain View took the first 25 to 17 and what was a close set throughout but Mountain View ran away with it the opposite could be said here in the second set now to Hall Good job on the kill there. Able to sneak it into that I far right corner. I mentioned this in the first set. Those corner shots are always tough. You never know when, whether they're going to be in or out. And great job there by the referee. This is now 24 to 18. This Red Mountain just needs one more point. That got a lot of oohs and ahs from the crowd on that one. But Mountain View still down by six. Now towards that middle row, Bingham keeps it back up in the air for Mountain View. Now on the near side, Hall can Mountain View, or rather Red Mountain keep it going. They can, and they send it down. They were playing defense, and it turned into offense real quick. And oh. Red Mountain able to take the second set, 25-18. to 18. Oh, a great effort there from Mountain View, but unfortunately Red Mountain was the better team on that play. I mean, you got to give it up for Mountain View in that set. I mean, they were just, I mean, they did their best to really just come back and win, but we are all tied up heading into the third and final set. And actually here, it's going to go to a best of five. We saw the JV game earlier just go three, but this will be a best of five. So we'll get a minimum now of four sets, a maximum of five. So don't go anywhere on the Varsity Sports Show. 
back after this. Third set action at the home of the Mountain View Toros. Hey everyone, I'm David Lopez from the University of Florida with the Varsity Sports Show, and I'm here to talk about the 2024 MLB World Tour and its first ever stop in the Dominican Republic. The MLB has expanded its efforts each year to make baseball a global game, with this year's tour taking stops in South Korea, Mexico, the United Kingdom, and of course, the Dominican Republic. The Dominican Republic is a country with a rich baseball history and culture, a country that has produced Hall of Famers such as Pedro Martinez, Vladimir Guerrero, David Ortiz, and future Hall of Famer Albert Pujols. The MLB has hosted three baseball expositions since 1999 in the Dominican Republic and has already set up baseball education and training programs throughout the country. This year's event serves to honor the MLB players that made a name for themselves in the Dominican Republic and celebrate the country's impact on baseball as a whole. Dominican players already make up over 10% of players in the MLB, and this stop of the World Tour helps add more infrastructure and legitimacy to the baseball programs within the DR. This year's Dominican Republic Series featured the Boston Red Sox and the Tampa Bay Rays, who played games on March 9th and 10th this year in the Estadio Quisqueya in Santo Domingo. In the first game on March 9th, Red Sox legends and Dominican Republic natives David Ortiz and Pedro Martinez threw out the honorary first pitch before a 4-0 Red Sox win. There were more fireworks the next day, however, in a 7-6 win for the Red Sox to sweep the spring training series, punctuated by a grand slam from Red Sox third baseman Bobby Dalbic and a save by Santo Domingo native Joely Rodriguez. In a weekend headlined by bands and drumlines performing around the stadium, raucous fans excited to see their favorite sport played at the highest level, and a celebration of a country with a deep love for the sport, the MLB's World Tour took its most memorable stop in the Dominican Republic just two weeks ago. Once again, I'm David Lopez from the University of Florida, signing off, and you're listening to the Varsity Sports Show. A 1-1 score here after two sets. Mountain View took the first 25-17. to Red Mountain, a major answer, 25-18 to in the second set. So, as I mentioned before the break, this one going a minimum of four sets, a maximum of five. A lot of volleyball to be played, Sammy. Oh, volleyball, I mean, it definitely the, complex, the complexity of it. I mean, just... This is the best of five, and we're now going to a minimum of four because if Mountain View won that last one, they could they could have had a chance to put it away right here. So the third set about to get underway, and just quickly want to shout out a couple of special viewers tuning in. Grace Thurkelson, thanks for tuning in to the Varsity Sports Show on your way back from clinicals, as well as my good friend Ryan Coda and Tom Penn, too. Third set of action here, starting off with a point for Mountain View. You saw that ball ricochet off his face as that ball just went out of bounds, worked in Mountain View's favor that time. Williams back to serve. He's gone down the line as he has done all match so far. Good kill on the inside from Tompkinson. He's been almost perfect, I mean... What more, what more can you do in terms of blocking defensively for Mountain View? Haven't seen a way to stop those attempts from Tompkinson at all. Mountain View seems to have all the answers for Mountain View here tonight, and it's certainly no different as we start this th third set as Red Mountain will gain another point there after the net touch. Yeah, it might have been a hold actually there. I think on the inside from Lance Jones, rather Luke Jones, excuse me, Luke Jones, for the Mountain View Toros. The score now two to one for Red Mountain and the man of the match so far through two sets, Garrett Tompkinson back to serve. Off the net, point still continuing for Mountain View. What a block! Rocco Damasari. We said both Tompkinson brothers, but that time a different Mountain Lion leaping up and elevating for the block. Oh, a great block there. <laughs> from Rocco. I mean, he came to rock here tonight. He indeed did. Tompkinson missing on that serve into the net, looking for that cross-court placement. So just a 3-2 early third set lead for Mountain View. Rather, Red Mountain. Big on serve. Orta in the middle. Back up to the other Tompkinson, Brexton. Didn't time the kill well, but just needed a little touch in order for it to dribble over into the middle 
of that Mountain View middle half. Oh, he was floating in the air like Tinkerbell. There, all you needed was just a little touch for the point. Ball up front. Mountain View sending it down, but now back to Red Mountain, and we're going to get four touches here. Yes, we are. Demisari was out of bounds that time as Mountain View is only down by one point. Missed opportunity on the set attempt from Orta, who's been great so far in the libero spot. Back on the outside. Now towards the inside to Demisari. Towards that back half and a cross-court kill that's deflected into the opposite stands. Haven't seen Dade Masari's name a lot, but he's come up big already with a couple points in this 5-3 early third set lead. Oh, uh, you, you make a great point here. I mean, he just came out of nowhere in this third set, already making an impact and name for himself tonight. Paul, almost an overpass. Wilhelm on the kill attempt was blocked up front by Red Mountain. So the Mountain Lions doubling up their counterpart to the counterpart in the Toro six to three. Pennington to serve down the middle, all and on the outside. A couple of great attempts there to get it back over for Red Mountain from Garrett Tompkinson, but Jones. Not able to end it. Looks like he did on the kill attempt, but he touched the net on the follow through. Yeah, that ball hit the pole that time. I mean, just it. what looked like an incredible effort there from Mountain View. They unfortunately came up short there, but they didn't come up short that time as they are only down three now. Yeah, we've seen the serves missing into the net. Slow the momentum down on both sides. That time, a little bit of a miscue from Dallin Pennington. A couple of good serves before that. And an error that time. Jones back over. A set on the outside. Good block by Wilhelm. Red Mound still with it. Back to Tompkinson. Able to get it down. Another spike from Tompkinson. And a timeout's been called again. Coach Powell electing to take his third timeout of the match. His team just with half the total of what the opposition has in the board, down by a score of 8-4. to four. And through this timeout, we're going to keep it with you on the Varsity Sports Show. Kobe Bronstein alongside Sammy Califf, an entertaining rivalry matchup. Obviously, Mountain View and Red Mountain played already at the home of the Mountain Lions. And it's the team that's falling behind at the moment that was able to get the victory the first time and potentially a taste of revenge right now for Red Mountain. Oh, like I mentioned before, I mean, Red Mountain did lose to Mountain View early on in this season. I asked Coach Hutter what the team needs to do in order to get that win back, and he told me work on their defense and work on the offense a little bit more, and we're certainly seeing those improvements here. And if you ask me what the Toros need, is a bit of a new strategy here. Obviously, Red Mountain is coming in with those hard-hitting spikes, and I think Mountain View needs to work on the blocking. One well, specifically both Tompkinsons, but Garrett Tompkinson has been outstanding. And that back line, whoever it is back there for the Toros, has been unable to come up with an answer in order to even keep the point going. And it's been all Red Mountain here in the third set. One set apiece, 8-4 to four lead for the Mountain Lions. The serve down the line from the left side, now towards the outside for Mountain View. And that's a way to get your team back in the point column. Now just down by three points. And a whiff on the block attempt up front by Luca Erickson. Coach Powell has called timeout three times this game. So hopefully third time is the charm for Mountain View as they look to get back in this game. All sends it towards the middle. A little and bit of an awkward point. Who's going to get it? It's going to be the Toros. Oh, and Porter Wilhelm just came in with that rejected by Anthony Davis pose. <laughs> I mean, just shoving it down Red Mountain's throat as they're only down two. But again, these unforced errors as a result of poor serving. This time for Maddox Hall gives a 9-6 lead for Red Mountain, and they're back on serve. Red Mountain just poured cool water over the hot hand of Mountain View. 
as they look to increase their lead. Yeah, Red Mountain looking good so far here in the third set, but Wilhelm puts an uh, end to the bleeding a little bit with his team down by two. I mentioned earlier that Wilhelm has been dominant for Mountain View tonight, and it looks like he's having a career night here. Fans cheering for Easton Stace call on the serve. The set towards the near side. Good dig from Stace call, but nothing you could do about that. I mean, you try to get the set back up to your team, laying your body on the line from Stace call. And when it goes over to the net on the other side with an elevation from Garrett Tompkinson, who just sends it down your throat. Ball Tompkinson's. I asked Coach Hutter what he expected from them tonight, and he expected, well, he told me to expect this. I mean, a great performance from both of them tonight as Red Mountain looks to extend their lead. Brief pause in the action, but back to serve now for Red Mountain. Caleb Haskett started off this third set and now able to get an ace. Red Mountain did their own little version of Cristiano Ronaldo's Sue as they all jumped in the one place. And you know what? That's the same A celebration for Mountain View as well. Haven't seen a single ace on their part in this game, but we saw plenty last week against Skyline, including five alone in a row by Maddox Williams. The score was 7-11 as it, as it is now 8-11. I mean, Mountain View just needed a little gas there, and they're looking to do just that. So a side out now for the Toros. Denim comes out. Williams comes back in the game. He's by far served the most out of any player on both sides today. Out of the left side, mostly serving down the line. Hits off the net. Well, towards the inside. Get it back over now. Oh, my goodness. What a point. And it ends in a Mountain View. In the way, rather, of the Mountain View Toros. Furious pace of play with not a lot of design set opportunities. It was just going over back and forth. Oh, this is what Mountain View needed as they are only down one point now. Oh, and the team, Mountain View on the sideline doing that Wii Sports bowling celebration. As, yeah, I would be excited too if I were them. They're only down by one point now. Williams on the ace. Two straight serves off the net. Not that time. Good job from Tompkinson to get his team an opportunity. Now up front, good block. But it's going to sail outside of the lines for the younger Tompkinson. In Brexton. All Mountain View is back in this game now. It's 11-11. Can they take the lead for the first time in this set? Tompkinson a bump up in the air. Orta trying to get it over. Almost too far, but Mountain View elected to keep the point going. And it got Red Mountain off their toes out of position. Oh, man, Matex Williams just floated like a fairly odd parent as you only need just one touch for it to sail over the net. Make it five straight points for the Toros. It was 11-7. to seven. It's now 12-7. to seven. Orta up in the air, almost hitting the light under the ceiling. Williams up front to the outside of Jones. What a kill. And business has just picked up for the Toros. Like I mentioned before, you mess with the bull, you get the horns as another timeout has been called. This, oh, yeah. This time the first for Red Mountain. It's 13-11 for the Toros. We've seen the momentum shift, and it's back with the home side in Mountain View. Don't go anywhere. This is as entertaining as it's been on the Varsity Sports Show. We'll be right back. Hey folks, J.R. Lambright here, special field correspondent for the Varsity Sports Show. Join me every Saturday from 8 to 10 a.m. Pacific for J.R.'s Texas Tales, where I share stories of Texans who triumphed over adversity and gave back to their local communities. Tune in for a bit of gritty edification on KDUS AM 1060, Arizona.
How about that? The last seven points going in favor of the Toros. Down 11 to 6. It's now 13 to 11. Maytex Williams now back for Mountain View. Horta up in the air as the libero now on the outside from Rocco De Masari. Able to get his team a point. Just a little push over the net was all he needed. Red Mountain down by just a point. Seems like they were clinging on to a comfortable lead that has just been erased. Williams to Jones on the inside. Red Mountain keeps it going with a fist up in the air. But nothing more after that. Oh, Luke Jones has got that special Godzilla swap in him. I mean, we've seen that play a million times tonight. I mean, just over the net and just down with the force. The force is certainly with Mountain View right now. A little Star Wars reference for you. Good block up front by Williams. Now to Tompkinson. Another good dig in the back half by Bigler. Too much on the block from Red Mountain. That time, Garrett Tompkinson. He's fired up as he takes a seat on the Red Mountain bench. Oh, perhaps that pep talk from Coach Hutter helped out Red Mountain a little bit as they're crawling their way back in this game. Orta on serve for Red Mountain. Down by one. Bingham now up front. Sending it down are the Toros. Didn't time the kill the best, but it's an end to it. A deflection in the back line, but nothing the Mountain Lions can do. This is the Toros' largest lead, as you just saw another Wii Sports celebration there from Mountain View. And as I was saying, another, well, this is already the Toros' largest lead of the set. Only up by three points. I haven't seen a serve error in a little bit, but we get one from Bingham that time. And that allows the Mountain Lions to itch and claw back into the lead. And they're just down by two. 30 points in, a 16 to 14 lead for the Toros in the third. Back up front to Williams. A back set to Jones. Does it clip the corner? It does not. What do you know? It's all tied up at 16. Oh, we are witnessing a very intense game here. It's been close all game. And usually around this time, the momentum shifts in someone's favor. So we'll see who that will be right now. Pennington on serve. Bigler and overpass. And it's ended real quick. That time, Luca Erickson just needed to elevate it and dunk it over to where nobody was home. All up in the air. A back set to Jones. Gets it in that no man's land area. Knock, knock. The Mountain Lions not home. All oh. knotted up at 17 in the third set. One set apiece here at the home of the Mountain View Toros. Jones on surf. Down the line. A bump. And a kill on the outside. But Hall not able to keep it up. Almost at the announcer's desk there as Red um, yeah, Red Mountain just looks to really claw their way back in this game. As it is now 18 to 17 Toros. Well, that looked like a hold. It wasn't called. Or 18 to Well, it is 18-18 now. But I think a couple smiles up front. Porter Wilhelm. May have felt he did something he shouldn't have, but nonetheless, Mountain View getting the point, and these are coming at an ever-crucial time here at 18 apiece here in the third. Potentially a couple points until a timeout here. Jack Stradling just served for Mountain View. A booming attempt on the outside from Garrett Tompkinson gives his team the lead. We have a thunderous crowd here tonight as people, I mean, both teams are based in Mesa, and a, it's clear that a lot of people made the trip to be here tonight. Erickson across court serve. A low set, but Porter Wilhelm. 
able to put it down for a point. He's got some bunnies and his jumping ability. Didn't need to elevate that much in order to get his team point. Up in the air on the outside, Denham. Good block up front by Tompkinson. Goes over the net. A little bit of a weird one with some players up towards the net. Didn't look like who touched it last, but the point goes to Red Mountain, 21 to 18. Timeout from Coach Powell, 21 to 18 lead for Red Mountain. This is a Mountain View Lead by a couple of points not too long ago, Sammy. What have you seen the last couple of points in order for Red Mountain to retake it? Oh, there's a certain pattern when it comes to these sets here. I mean, usually around this time, it's close until the momentum shifts in someone's favor, and that's going to be Red Mountain yet again here. I mean, they're up 21-18, to 18, and as both teams take a timeout here, they're quickly discussing what they need to do to put this set away, as we'll be heading into a fourth set pretty soon, and someone will be up 2-1. to one. We're going to head to a very quick break, and afterwards, or actually we're going to keep it here, says our producer, RJ Villacorte. 21 to 18 lead now for Mountain View, as you see on your screen. The broadcast, as always, brought to you by the Varsity Media Foundation. Tune into our radio show only on KDUS AM 1060. A new time as well, as of the last couple weeks. Always at 9 to 11 a.m. every Saturday. And you will see me on that show a week from Saturday as Red Mountain looks to close things out here in the third set. Wilhelm missing on that attempt. 22 to 18 for Red Mountain. Saw him send it down beautifully, almost in an identical spot. A couple points earlier. Misfires on that one as his team's down by four. Red Mountain lost the first set 25-18. to 18. Their team took the second set by the same score, and they're up 22-18. to 18. On the inside, Bigler. A good block by a combination of Via Corte, excuse me, not Via Corte, rather Via Pondo and Tompkinson. What a block that time. Combination of Wilhelm on the inside and on the outside in Madden Hall. Oh, you said it, Cor Kobe. Um, oh, we are messing up names here. I almost called you Cor Corby. But, but yeah, I mean, a lot of names here today, and it's it's been great. That's when you know something's, on, something's working. Back up front, nobody home. A diving attempt with the fist by Luca Erickson there. This is what Mountain View needs. You need to claw back into this lead. They're down by... A score of 23 to 19. Easton Stayskull on serve. Hits it into the net. Not yep. what you want for Mountain View. Just when you thought they would creep back point by point, Stayskull gives a set point to Red Mountain. Red Mountain only needs just one more point here, and they will be up 2-1 to one in this game as we head to possibly the last set as this is a best of five. Caleb Haskett to serve, 24 to 19. That sets all a piece at one. Haskett to serve, back towards the middle. Williams up to Bigler, puts it down for a point. Down oh. the line kill and nobody back to retrieve it. A couple of players in the area. Oh, Mountain View still has a big chance here. Only down by four. A comeback is not out of the question here. You want this guy on serve in Williams, but it gets back up to Tompkinson. Good block up front, but Bigler not able to keep it within the lines. That's a second set, 25 to 20 victory for the Red Mountain Mountain Lions. Oh, I'm excited to see a fourth set here, and we'll be right back with that as we take a quick commercial break. Don't go anywhere. Stay with us. 
is Ella Walter Sanchez from Arcadia High School reporting for the Varsity Sports Show. With baseball season starting up at all levels, I wanted to highlight a training center that offers affordable lessons for both baseball and softball nationwide and in the Valley. There are four locations around the Valley and 150 nationwide. Today, I'm here specifically at the Scottsdale location located on Talking Stick and Pima Road. So we have a few different options. Um, open to the public. We also offer memberships that definitely save some money for you guys. Um, to the public, we're looking at machine. So whenever you walk in, we have automatic pitching machines. We also have private cages that you can reserve in increments 30, 60 minutes, bucket of balls, T, L screen. You can take batting practice in there, those sort of things. And then as far as lessons and instruction, um, we have a handful of baseball and softball instructors do everything from infield, outfield, hitting, catching, basically anything you're looking to work on. At DBAT Scottsdale, they offer more than 50 camps, clinics, and classes each year, which is a great opportunity for aspiring baseball and softball players. With spring break coming up, DBATS is offering a spring break camp from the 11th through the 15th for children ages 6 through 12. What is so great about programs like DBATS is they offer versatile options for everyone. We've, we've been around for a little bit now. The company in general has been around for a while. Um, what's cool about us is we have no affiliation with anybody. So everybody's welcome. You know, we get friends that are just coming in to hang out, hit on the machines. We got people coming in here to work on our craft. And we get a very, very wide range of kids ages, you know, four or five, all the way up to high school through college even some professional guys in the off season. Um, like we just had some big leaguers in here that just left for camp and everything like that. Um, so we get a wide variety of skills, um, but end of the day, it's a fun environment, safe environment. Make sure to visit their website at dbats.com or check them out on Instagram at dbatsports. This is Ella Walter Sanchez reporting for the Varsity Sports Show. Till next time. When you think of family restaurants and sports bars, think Bonfire. Bonfire is part of the Tempe landscape, supporting local schools. Join the Bonfire Booster Club Challenge. Mention Corona del Sol, Desert Vista, Marcos Denisa, Mountain Point, or Valley Christian, and that school's sports program will earn loyalty points. The winner after football season will earn a fundraiser at Bonfire. Come for the food and fun, support the community. Bonfire, open every day east of I-10 on Warren. Show your game ticket all day Friday and Saturday and get 15% off. 480-306-6801. Back here at the home of the Mountain View Toros, getting a look at the voice of the broadcasters, but not just the voice, the people actually on air. I'm Kobe Bronstein alongside Sammy Califf. You also see our producer before that and RJ Corte doing an amazing job as always. Alyssa Firestone, thanks for doing that little pan on the broadcasters and the other camera person, Nash Dara, doing a great job as always. Oh, here we go now. The fourth set, and possibly the last one, if Red Mountain can continue doing what they're doing. Back and forth pace here on this point of back set. Now a push. Back with Mountain View. Good dig from Orta, the libero. Now on the outside of Tompkinson. What a block. Combination and that time of Jones and again, another Tompkins Mountain View player. Tompkinson finally gets stopped as he almost had a successful spike every time he got the ball. Williams on serve again. A little errant as it goes outside the lines to level it up at 1-1 in the fourth. Back and forth game throughout the first set. 25-18 for Mountain View. The second set, 25-18 for Red Mountain. And the third set, 25 to 20 once again for the Mountain Lions with just this set and able to get the 25 points for a win. Good block up front that time. A combination of both Rocco De Masari and who else but Garrett Tompkinson. He has just been outstanding. His brother Brexton Tompkinson, one year younger, also a bright spot on this Mountain Lions team. Oh, you look at the score, one to two, as it is now two to two. Oh, I just have that habit of speaking too soon. Yeah, Haskett picked his spot well, but just a little bit outside of that left corner. Tate Bigler now will serve for Mountain View. 
Basketball player in the winter, volleyball player come spring. And what do you know, an ace for Bigler and Mountain View, their third of the match. Uh, remember, if Mountain View wins this, we will go to a fifth set, and that will be the deciding factor as it is a best of five. Let's see if Mountain View can stay in this game. Bigler towards the middle. Another bad reception from Orta back there. Haven't seen that much from the back line of Red Mountain. And you saw it there from the Mountain View team. They acted like they just bowled the strike as they think they're in Wii Sports. Seen a couple similar celebrations on both sides. Fans Bolt. really getting into this matchup too. Another ace for Bigler on an error from Tompkinson. Oh, five to two now. Business is starting to pick up here. Both these schools obviously in a rivalry. Who is the king of Mesa? And in these games, they're able to talk about this. And who wins a rivalry for the rest of their lives as the ball's up in the air. Orta on the near side to Tompkinson. Now a set and a kill that time from Hall who puts it down. Mountain View is starting to come alive here as we get a quick timeout here from Red Mountain. So Red Mountain elects to take their second timeout. The other side and coach Kevin Powell has taken three. And his squad off to a good start in the fourth set. And they need it badly down by two sets to one. We're going to head to a quick break. And we'll be back shortly on the Varsity Sports Show. Bruno! Bruno! Pop on the run? No problem. With five drive modes, Rogue makes this a walk in the park. Drive the Nissan Rogue. Now get the 2023 Nissan Rogue with best-in-class fuel economy among gas engines. Already back here, a 6-2 lead. Here's Tompkinson. And again, what can you do if you're Mountain View? That hasn't been stopped, and... That mountain lion is a ferocious beast. He's got bad intentions. Tompkinson does on every kill. Here's Jones to the outside. Good job by Tompkinson to keep it going. A touch over the net. Too far on the dig. Rather not a dig, but just trying to send it back over desperately from Bigler. Great eye from Red Mountain. I mean, they let that go out of bounds because they knew it was going to go out of bounds as they look to retake the lead here as it becomes 6-5. Perhaps that pep talk from Coach Hutter really helped the team out and really helped them get their head in the game. Brexton Tompkinson, his first ace of the match, goes back to Bingham. First, it looked like an overpass. Wasn't an overpass, but probably should have let it go over as there was a net touch up front by the libero in Braxton Bingham. Oh, actually, it looks like Red Mound touched the net first, so Bingham back to serve. My apologies. His team up 7-5 to five in the fourth. A back set to Garrett Tompkinson, and nobody there in on the block to elevate for it. Oh, the Tompkinsons have been dominant all night here, and they're, it's really no different in this set, as it is only 7-6 to six now. The set up front to Wilhelm off the net. Back with Mountain View. Here's Jones. They like to pass it over. Down the outside, but into the net that time by Thornton for Red Mountain. So the Toros back on serve, an 8-6 to six lead, two sets to one, as you see on your screen for Red Mountain. If Mountain View wants to win this set, they got to focus on their blocking, and they've been doing a pretty good job at that, and they got to keep this up. Luke Jones down the middle. Tompkinson now, that was a little weird attempt, but it keeps going for Red Mountain. A touch over the net by Tompkinson. A set to the inside, good dig. Orta, back to Tompkinson. Great job from Bigler. 
to Tompkinson again, to no avail to Bingham down the line. A great effort there from both teams. It could have went either way there, but it ended up working in Red Mountain's favor. I mean, just a great effort from Mountain View. Yeah, especially Bigler in the middle, able to send it over on a booming kill the first time from Tompkinson. And they had no answer for the second. And this is something for the Toros. And this is something Mountain View is going to want to do. They got to capitalize when Red Mountain is vulnerable. And they had plenty of chances to do that in the last set. Hall with a bullet gives his team a two-point lead. Red Mountain coming into the day. Their head coach in Jeremy Hutter. And his squad, an 11-9 record, just 2-4 and four in the 6A East Valley Division. Puts them in fourth place. Their opposition, the team serving in Hall and company, 4-2, and two, good for second place. The block by Wilhelm. A touch on the top of the net. Back towards Tompkinson. Now to Williams. On the outside, Bigler didn't get his footing properly. To Tompkinson again on a touch. Long point. Now to Williams on the outside. Good block. Back to Williams. Over to Bigler. This point continues. Now on the inside again, but into the net. An absolutely sensational play from Mountain View as we have we just had two back-to-back -back great plays there. I mean, this game could really go either way. Good serve by Hall. Thornton. Able to keep it alive, as does Via Pondo. Williams sends it over. Almost like a fly swatter there. Via Pondo did the same. Wilhelm, more force on that. And a couple players and Tompkins and Orta running into each other. What's that? Is there a mosquito on my wall? Pow! And that's what he just did there. All into the net. So 11 to 8 now. And this was the point where Mountain View also had the lead. Or rather, excuse me, Red Mountain had the lead. Mountain View able to creep back into it after a run of six or seven points in a row. And then we saw in the end when Red Mountain completely took over to take the third set. Another miss serve that time for Med Red Mountain. Given now Stay Skull, who's coming off the bench to serve now on the outside. Oh, this is certainly working in Mountain View's favor now. This is exactly what they needed as they are down 2-1 in the game. Nobody home for the Toros via Pondo. A bullet to the floor. Both of these teams on losing streaks coming into today. Mountain View at three games. They won their last home match a week ago against a winless team in Skyline Prep. The last three losses coming in the span of two days in neutral site tournaments. All up in the air. They get it up front. What a job by Red Mountain. And as a result, nobody in that back half on the near side for Mountain View easily able to get a point. Oh, you saw those back-to-back -back spikes there. I mean, it could it could have went either way there. I mean... Like we've been seeing all night, this has been a phenomenal game. Thirteen to nine now for Mountain View. Down by a set, and he's able to get an ace. We had a Mountain Lion just enter the game for the first time, and Matthew Pastorin, who wasn't there. Coach Hunter telling him to get a little bit lower in an athletic stance with his team down by five. Able to convert on that opportunity. Now to the inside via Pondo. What a dig by Bingham. Good block up front by Via Pondo and Tompkinson. Who's going to get the point? The referee talking with both sides. Bigler wanted it and he's going to get it. Oh, that was really close there, Kobe. I mean, I, I've mentioned this many times. Those corner shots are really tough to call, especially if you're the referee. And the referee on the inside, right in front of it, here to make the right call. Overpass. 
And an easy put down that time from Bigler. Almost like a King Kong swat there from Bangit. And he's been having a really phenomenal game so far. I mean, Bigler is just, I mean, he's been a magician tonight. Hey, Bigler Jr. outside hitter standing at six feet flat. 16 to nine lead the largest of the game for Mountain View. But when you got a guy like Tompkinson on the outside, this game can shift real quick. And it's back to a six point margin for Mountain View. Two set to one lead for the Red Mountain Mountain Lions. They lost the first, they've won the last two. And they need to claw back into this one down by six. Oh, first of 25 wins a set, and Mountain View has a huge opportunity to take it to five sets as they are now up seven, and they're only eight points away from doing just that. An error by Haskett, and it's a 17-10 lead, and the guy that's come up big here, Tate Bigler, missing that serve that time. Still been magnificent here in the fourth set, so we get back-to-back -back serving errors, and with no points played out on the serve and receive, it's still a six point lead for Mountain View. Bingham, Williams to Hall. And a block that sails too far. 18 to 11 now and the Toros are just this close to putting the set away and tying things up at two games apiece. How fun would a deciding fifth set be? This place will be electric if it comes down to that. A couple of weird sets, but Red Mountain gets it over. Bingham on the outside. Jones an opportunity. Tompkinson back there. Good dig in the back by Bigler. Back to Jones. Tompkinson not there. They're called digs for a reason. You got to dig down deep if you want to win this game. And that's what Mountain View is doing here as they are only six points away from putting this set away. Timeouts to be used on both sides. Still two remaining for the Mountain Lions and Mountain View. Wilhelm on the block, but he touched the net. So Red Mountain given the point. They're down by seven. Last time out for Red Mountain... Mentioned it a little bit earlier, but they lost to Estrella Foothills in a razor close deciding third set in a tournament. Jones, an answer. And Mountain View over there just celebrating. However, they still need five points in order to take this game to a deciding set five. Side out now for the Toros. Williams comes out. Denham. Back in on the inside. Jones the jump surf. Now on the inside. Worked out well, but Bingham's got to get it over. On the inside now, sending it down beautifully. Rocco Demisari. Demisari has come up clutch for Red Mountain so far these past two sets. We did not hear his name for the first two but he has really made a name for himself in the third and fourth sets. So now 20 to 13 lead for Mountain View back to serve Dallin Pennington. Set on the inside, a touch over the net by Denham. Via Pondo. Who's going to get the point? Looks like Mountain View. So Denham with the elevation. Coming up a little gimpy too on... That right leg. And Sammy, he got his team the point, too. How about that? Oh, definitely a clutch play there for Mountain View. And you're going to want to make plays like that if you want to stay in this game. And that's something Mountain View has done a phenomenal job with tonight. I mean, those pep talks from Coach Powell must have really helped them. So this game takes a brief pause. Giving Denim a second. And he's going to take a seat. Hopefully he comes back in this one as the doctors and this Mountain View medical staff going to check in on their fellow Toro. Denham has been phenomenal for Mountain View tonight. And let's not forget his great performance here. 
Hall to serve, sails too far. Toros only need four points now to take this to set five. We've got a football score at 21 to 14 for Mountain View. Up front to Williams who sends it over and they're anticipating it up front, Luca Erickson. So Williams elected not to use that second pass to send it over. 21-15, Bingham, Williams, Wilhelm. A bump back in the air and they send it over. Williams tried to end it but sailed wide to the left. Oh, if I were Mountain View, I would not be making these kinds of mistakes here as they are just inches away from winning the set and having another opportunity to win the game here. Bigler able to get it over a good dig on the outside. Can they keep it going? They can't. That and would have been tremendous. An incredible effort there as the ball went behind the announcer's desk there. And I mean, it hit the ceiling, and Mountain View kept it in play up until it went out It went out of bounds. And just the power of Garrett Tompkinson has been lethal. Williams to Wilhelm, try to touch it over. Did he touch the net? No, they're saying on the other side, a net touch. Mountain View finally gets a point back as they're now three points away from taking this to set five. The Toros catch a break, 22 to 17 here in the fourth set. They're down two sets to one, and the fans going loud here. That's two straight misses on serve for Stayskull. The last one was costly. It gave Red Mountain a set point, and they were able to take it just two points later. That came in the third, this one in the fourth. Stayskull's team still just three points away. Williams on the inside to Bigler. Oh, man. Good job to keep it going. And that's how the point ends in an instant. Garrett Tompkinson. And it's as close as ever here in the back half of the fourth set with the Mountain Lions down by just three. It's a crosstown matchup. You can see that plenty of people have made their way from all over town to be here tonight. And it is absolutely thunderous here in Mountain View High School here tonight. Williams is set towards the inside. Miscommunication there. Looks like Erickson was playing a little bit too far back. Mountain View has this one in the bag. They just got to capitalize on their current momentum. Williams to serve. Down the line. Orta up in the air. Outside to Brexton Tompkinson. Bigler to the opposite side. Out of Viapondo, good block. Red Mountain keeps it going. Viapondo sending it back over Bingham. Now to Bigler, a push over the net. All the way on the outside, Brexton. Good counter there. Back set from Jones, they still keep it going. It's still loose, Orta sends it over. What a point. Williams, a back set to Jones. Off the net, and it almost it over. there. Sammy's fired up. 24 to 19, a set point in the fourth to send it to a deciding fifth on the line. Oh, Mountain View has is Mountain View's just one point away from taking this to a deciding set five. Williams to the back line of Red Mountain. On the inside via Pondo. A thunderous booming strike that's able to get past the hands of the guy trying to make a block in Bigler. Only down four points now is Red Mountain, but Mountain View with a huge opportunity here to stay in this game. Coach Powell looks like, if I'm a professional lip reader, that he wanted a timeout, and what do you know? Mountain View is able to get it. His team just a point away from sending it to a sudden death fifth set where it would be the first to 15 points. We're going to head to a quick break, but I promise you, you're not going to want to go anywhere, and we'll return shortly. It started in the city. It started on a sandlot. It started on a Sunday. The focus. The drive. The dream. 
You knew how it felt. You knew we needed the tools necessary. You knew we needed funds to travel to tournaments. You provided me with the best equipment. You gave me opportunity. Thanks, coach. Thank you, coach. Thanks, coach. Coach Powell wanted to talk things over with his team. Just a point away. 24 to 20. The first set, his team won. Coach Powell and Mountain View. The second and third went the way of the Mountain Lions. And this one, inching closer towards a Toro fourth set win. Bingham. Now on the inside to Jones, a touch over the net. Almost hit the pole. Now a back set. Here's Red Mountain now to Tompkinson. He's able to get it. It flirted with the line. And both sides are talking. It certainly looked like it was in. And Tompkinson and his Red Mountain team is going to get the point. Oh, only down by three now, but the Toros just need one more point. They've been tremendous during this set, and they only need just one more magical play. And they get it there! as Mountain View will take this to sudden death. A fourth set win for Mountain View, 25 to 21. We'll recap the four sets really quickly. The first, 25 to 18 Toros. Second and third, a 25 to 18 victory for Red Mountain, followed by 25 to 20 for the Mountain Lions. And this one, 25 to 20. What a fourth set, what a game. And with that, again, we're going to head to a quick break, but continue to tune in because we got a great, thrilling finish in the fifth and final set to come. Okay. All right, so uh, Miami is at Kansas City. They'll be facing the sixth seeded North Valley Christian Academy. Deep. He's looking for Jack Freeberg, and he has the open for the touchdown. Just like that, a 44-yard touchdown to Jack. This is Bobby Murphy here with Varsity Sports Show at Arizona College Prep. After I'm here with Coach Jason Jewell after an extremely gritty 14. In years. Shay, what did you see from the Sabercats tonight? Yeah. Rosen, also from Pinnacle. To the 30, the 40, the 50, all he sees is green in front of him. The 10, he will... Honestly, we really played as a team. That's probably one of the better games I've seen us play. Just We were past and we were... Fifth and final set between Mountain View and Red Mountain. There's a lot on the line here, not just in a rivalry, Sammy, but we're coming in on the home stretch of both of these team seasons. Oh, you said it there. I mean, a very intense game between both of these teams. And remember, sudden death, the winning team has to score 15 points instead of the usual 25. So this elevates the stakes here for both teams. Red Mountain, 11-9 on this season, a one-game losing streak. The other side, the Toros, a three-game losing streak in a span of two days at a neutral site tournament. Both of these teams looking for a W as they reach the last week of their regular seasons. Both teams very experienced. 
A lot of juniors and even more seniors. Williams to start off the fifth. On the inside, they get it to the older Garrett Tompkinson who misses out. Only 15 points here as the Toros are already up one to nothing. Williams has been outstanding on serve. A man of consistency. And as I say that, <laughs> a broadcaster's jinx. What else can you say? It happens sometimes. Don't mean any, mean any harm, obviously, to Williams. And this is coming at a time that is more important than ever with Red Mountain on serve for the first time. Bingham back to Williams. Good block up front by Tompkinson. They get it back to Jones with a push. Damasari sending it over all the way to Bigler now for Red Mountain. Rather Mountain View. Over to Garrett Tompkinson. Good dig in the back line. Garrett Tompkinson again. Yep, it hit off the fingers of Bigler up front. So Red Mountain with a 2-1 to one lead after three points and a deciding fifth. Caleb Haskett on serve from the left side. Bingham up front to Williams. Now on the outside to Bigler. And we got a net touch from Tompkinson. The younger Tompkinson and Brexton on the outside. So it gives Bigler the serve with the score knotted up at two. Uh, two, two now. I mean, this is where it comes down to the wire. Two points on each side, two sets on each side. And that one had vicious intentions. From Garrett Tompkinson, the junior mountain lion. He's got a mean, scary, angry mug on his face right now. Wouldn't mess with him. Williams now on the inside to Hall. What a block. It stays up in the air. A push over the net. Bigler all the way back. He continues the point. Now on the inside. Damasari. Williams. Hall. And the Toro's going to get a point. A phenomenal save from Biglet there as he was the driving force in giving Mountain View that point as it is now 3-3 three to three here in the deciding fifth set. Whoever, the, the first that reaches 15 points will win. Thornton with a kill. Off to the hands of Jones on the inside. And again, laying his body on the line in full sacrifice was Bigler. Orta, the libero, has been quiet in the back half of the game, but on to serve. Williams, now to Jones, able to get it on a cross-court kill. Tompkinson playing a little bit more inside as opposed to hugging that left corner. So we got two sets on each side. We got four points on each side. Every single category all matched up. And the stars align for a thrilling fifth set finish. Here's Luke Jones. Tompkinson with an overpass. And ending it quickly was Williams. Five to four now Toros as they're only ten points away from, a, from completing a big comeback as they were down two to one. And now it's all tied up at two to two. The fans really loud right now, again, as this game intensifies. Over to Damasari, who tapped it over. Back to Hall. Porta in the middle. Set it for Tompkinson, who missed, fired. So a two-point lead at an ever-important time for Mountain View. Luke Jacobs now back to serve, and he has been... Mountain View's most dominant player tonight. The bump is set on the outside. Bigler all the way up front, sending it down beautifully. Was Mountain View. It was a miscommunication from both referees, but Mountain View now on top by three in the fifth. And we're, with that, a timeout from Coach Hutter and Red Mountain, and we're going to take a quick timeout. But believe me, you're going to want to stay on 
to watch this incredible finish. What's inside you? Is it strength? Is it speed? Is it knowledge of the game? Unlocking the greatness inside you means digging deeper, running faster, and going further than you can on your own. Banner Sports Medicine High Performance Center trains the athlete in all of us with technology. Got back in the middle of the action after the timeout. And Red Mountain able to get a point. Now down by two. That ball came right towards us, Kobe. A thunderous spike there from the opposite side. Sammy and I now on our feet. Needed to stretch our legs after sitting down for most of this match. But all you can do is stand up and watch intently. In the oh. waning points of the set. And that's not what you want from the Toros. That's going to be an ace here at a crucial moment in the fifth set from a guy that we haven't called the name of a lot in the last two sets in Dallin Pennington. A short serve. Bigler now to Williams. Set down. Porter Wilhelm. This is a battle. Oh, eight to six. Now it is coming down to the wire here, and this is exactly what you want if you're Mountain View. You were down two to one, and now you tied things up at two games apiece, and now you have a commanding lead here in the deciding fifth set. And we're seeing a newbie in Jack Stradling, who was just on serve for Mountain View. Bigler laying his body on the line. Can they get it over? They can. It was Stradling, too. Now to Viapondo. And he gets the point for his Mountain Lions team. Oh, they are staying alive, and we are not talking about the musical group Bee Gees. No, we're not. This is high school volleyball at the highest level in the state of Arizona. Both teams in the 6A East Valley Division, separated by a couple of miles in the same city. Williams, the Wilhelm who just barely got it over Orta on the ground. Tompkinson, is it in? It was not, and it was a real close one, too. So Tompkinson, just a couple smidges off of the back line. And the Toros on serve with Brody Bingham up by two. Orta up front. Now to Viapondo down the line. Bingham can't handle it. I think the viewers, Sammy, got to be on the edge of their seat, as is everybody. If they're not on their feet, they're leaning forward, hunching. Nine oh, to eight Toros. That's the reason why we're standing up here. We're watching intensely as that ball comes right towards me as the ball rolls back down. As it is now 10 to 8 Toros. And again, this set is the first of 15 will be the winner. Toro's only fit five points away. And like I said, if you mess with the bull, you get the horns. On the outside, Tompkinson. What a brutal, brutal, brutal answer. Tompkinson. Brexton Tompkinson, that is. The sophomore Mountain Lion. Putting his team down by just a point. The Apondo comes out. Jack Thornton comes out. And the guy on serve re-entering in Caleb Haskett. This is also a section game, Kobe. Both teams need to win bad here if they want to have a chance to win their division. And Tompkinson just ties things up 10-10. to Back-to-back. -to -back. And the fans stop on their feet. You can feel the energy here in Mountain View High School's gym. As this is where volleyball is. 
Here's Haskett again. Down the middle, haul up in the air. Williams a back set. Good dig that time in the back line for Red Mountain. Back up front. Jones barely able to send it over. Now Orta. Thornton with a push. Bingham on the outside. A touch. Orta sprawling, but he's not there. 11 to 10. And a nifty move up front by the guy now on serve in Tate Bigler. 11 to 10, Toros. Now I know what it feels like to be Stephen A. Smith watching his New York Knicks. On the outside, inside rather, good block by Jones. Back to Tompkinson, another block. Still with Red Mountain. Now Dama, sorry, what a play by Bigler. They get it to Hall now. Tompkinson getting it back over. Williams on the outside of Jones, another block. Back to Jones with a push, a back set. Setting the stage for Thornton. And he doesn't connect. What a point. What a sequence, if you will. I mean, just back and forth action and Mountain View just saving the ball several times as they're only three points away from completing the comeback. You can feel the electricity here in Mesa. Bigler to serve, 12-10. And a miss into the net by Tompkinson. And a timeout here from Coach Hutter. We are going to keep it here. There are no more commercials to run. And why would there be? And that's 13 to 10 for the Toros. That's right, folks. We are now commercial free heading into the last few minutes of this game. And who wouldn't be as we are witnessing an intense game right now between Mountain View and Red Mountain? What an outstanding game played by both sides. And there's still more volleyball to be played. A timeout this time by Coach Hutter and his Red Mountain squad down by a set. Then they took a 2-1 set lead. They lost the fourth. We're here in the decider, Sammy. They're down by three. And if it wasn't crunch time before now, it certainly is. Oh, this is coming down to the wire here. This is the zenith, the apex of volleyball. Obviously, both teams don't want to be in this position, but it all comes down to this. Back to serve as Mountain View. Orta, Tompkinson in front of his bench. And they keep it going, are the Mountain Lions. That play was something out of Cinderella. Can't getting there. Can't get, not getting there, rather. I can't talk now because there's so much going on. Was Orta. And now it sets the stage for match point. All the students in attendance just rose to their feet. One point away. 14 to 10. Bigler a serve. Back up front. Now here's Tompkinson. Bigler keeps it going. Williams a back set. And he sends it down. Mountain View comes back from the brink of defeat to win against their arch rival. What an absolutely incredible comeback from Mountain View down 2-1 to one at the end of the third set. And now they take it to a deciding fifth set and they win it 15-10. to 10. Mountain View with an incredible performance. They won the first set down 2-1. to one. The fourth set went as back and forth as it could go. And it went in the favor of the Toros. And the fifth set, they're able to put a stamp on a rivalry game against their foe. And not just that, they've won both matchups. Are the Toros against their rival in the Red Mountain Mountain Lions. So for Mountain View, improving to 11, 12, and two on the season. 5-2 and two in the 6A East Valley Division. 3-1 and one at home as well. So in 25 total games played, you heard that right, and that four of those games have been at home for Mountain View. And on the other side for Red Mountain, now a two-game losing streak. A heartbreaking loss on the road against their rival. They're now 11-10 and 10 on the season, falling to 2-5 and five in the 6A East Valley Division. 
and two and six on the road. Sammy Califf dropped the headset. He's going to talk now to the winning head coach in Kevin Powell. But before that, we're going to end this stream. You got to watch the interview with Sammy on the Varsity Sports Show and all of their social media platforms. What a game. And it goes the way of the Mountain View Toros at home, 3-2. to two. For Sammy Califf, RJ Corte, the producer, always doing an amazing job. And our cameramen tonight, and Alyssa Firestone and Nash Dara, I'm Kobe Bronstein, signing off.